Ladies and gentlemen, I am joined by Australian promoter and manager Tony Tolge, all the way from Las Vegas. How are you, Tony, my friend? How are you, mate? Going well. Always a pleasure to talk with you, mate. You too, my friend. You too. So uh, tell me about your trip. How, how was everything? All good? You had to go from Perth. You yeah. had a bit of a different journey from the boys. You were out with the Malone. Yeah, we went to Perth and then we went to Sydney. Went overnight in Sydney and then um, San Francisco to Vegas. Yeah, all right, good man. Um, what? Uh, ha, 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 how's things there compared to when you were there last time? Is it is it my, is it a little bit is it a little bit more chilled with the coronavirus and yeah, a little bit. Um, it, it's always uh, laid back here, especially in Vegas. Um, Still, weather's still the same. It's bloody hot. Yeah. Oh, it's not here. But nice. Yeah, but nice. No, not as hot as it was before. Yeah. It's, it's interesting, I see. I've been talking to, like, some of your fighters in Perth over the past couple of days. Um, how are things in Perth? Uh, how, how is it as a promoter? How, how are you looking? I know we've got the Maloney's out at the moment, but we're going to get on to that. But I wanted to get more into getting the uh, get, getting the shows back going again in Perth, in Australia, where I've noticed some sports have had crowds. Um, well, it's a bit of a catch-22 because we technically can do shows in Perth, but um, look, we, there was a football match there last night. They had 32,000 people there. Oh, really? Um, yeah, um, but for the boxing, it's a little bit different where we're restricted to only WA fighters only. And we've got a lot of talented fighters, but it's only half of the equation. You can't get the real suitable matchups on. And I don't want to put on a, like a subpar event where people will come because there hasn't been boxing for a while, but they won't come back because... Um, it just wouldn't be a good fight. And that's not something that I'm interested in putting on. I just like putting on good, genuine matchups. And that's why people always come back. And that's why the fighters progress to another level because they're fighting good quality fights. Mm. Tony, move your, you're cutting the top of your head off a bit. Move your phone up a tiny bit, mate. There we go. Yeah, we can see your whole face now. Much better. Um, uh, so, so interesting. So, in terms of, I know obviously at the moment, main priority is, you know, you've got you got you got your guys in the biggest fight fights of their lives, which we've just been talking about. Um, but the promotional thing, what you're talking about there, very interesting. So, uh, you're talking about you can only use local fighters, and you know that's that's making things hard. Is there is there any way of you of you is there any way of the fighters getting to that point that they'll all just fight each other for the regional title while they wait for well, the, things to they, open they, up? They will fight each other. They, they, they will fight each other, but the, the, the issue is that there's not even enough uh, fighters in the state for specific weight divisions uh, but uh to, to jump into the next thing you're talking about a way to uh solve that equation is that they've been talking about easing the restrictions within the state uh, with states so then we can get guys in from interstate and then we can start doing matchups that way oh so if we can get that far if we can just open up australia we can get shows cracking is that, is that basically yeah, that's what you're saying, yeah? Yeah, that's, that's the plan. That, that will happen. Um, and I believe, still trying to push for one for the end of the year, but at, at worst, I'm guessing that we'll be able to do one for the start of uh, 2021 and just yeah. start it with a bang and just have cracking fights. Just have everyone on it, yeah. Just, <laughs> just have all you guys out. Um, so have you been talking to other... Australian promoters and have you also been talking to other promoters in other countries about this issue? Yeah, yeah, all the time. I talk to literally all the guys in different in, in Australia, all the promoters, 
all the different promoters in the world as well have all got similar problems like even uh, all the guys in Chile the issue there is um, you can't even get into a gym over there at the moment so let alone uh, fight shows but um, what care. about top but one of our top prospects is scheduled to fight at this stage on the 4th of November. That's uh, Junior Cruiser. So oh. he's, he, that's different because he's got, uh, he's in a region that's like about 14 hours from Santiago. Okay. Okay. So he can fight, yeah? So, okay. Yeah, well, well, that's the plan yeah. at this stage. So you're just pretty much all these fighters you've got, you're just sniffing any opportunity you can get at the moment. It's funny, I spoke to three of your fighters in Perth with with you, who you're very close with, Steve Gago, um, Jackson England, and Francis Chua, all really good guys. Uh, the mess is uh, Gago, yeah, excuse me. Uh, the 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 message from those three was quite clear ready to fight anyone at any time they're in the gym they're ready now they're ready to go abroad they're ready yeah. to they're ready to party basically um yeah in terms of in terms of that uh, uh, are you finding have they always been like that those guys are, i know the Maloney's have always been like that but are you finding what i'm trying to get at a fight is becoming more like that in this new in this new environment this new landscape yeah. I'd say yes and no. Um, hmm. Every fighter that uh, I'm involved with will not even ask the question. They will ready to go. If there's a fight on tomorrow, they'll they'll take it. Uh, they just trust me to put them in the right fights, the right opportunities. And uh, yeah, especially those three guys, they're ripping guys and they'll take on anyone and everyone. Um, at, at this stage, there's, uh, there's only one person that's uh, one fighter that's knocked the fight back. But everyone else is uh, just chopping at the bit, uh, ready to get on, uh, get in, back in the ring under those lights. Yeah, man. Yeah, man. I, uh, I, 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 I concur, certainly. Um, uh, what, so, so Vegas, uh, you're in Vegas, uh, talking to Andrew. Uh, he was quite open talking about the fight, which hasn't been officially announced, but Bob's been coming out about saying it or something. I don't know exactly what, but we're going to talk about it. Franco, rematch. You must be delighted. Yeah, that's great. We're still, uh, we're still uh, tying everything up, but it's uh, it's a great fight. That's the fight that uh, Andrew's wanted. That's uh, it. his complete motivation that drives him... Uh, and I think that fight will make him a better fighter. He's learned so much from that fight. And, mate, you got to admire the box uh, just for the warrior mentality. He, he broke an eardrum in round three. He's winning all the rounds up until that point. So he lost that round. And uh, yeah, equilibrium, equilibrium is not uh, correct. And then he's managed to win all the next rounds. And then he uh, busted the other eardrum. And then after that, he he lost uh, virtually the last sort of four plus rounds. So it ended up being uh, six rounds even, and uh, there was a knockdown in the tenth, and that's what cost him. He lost the fight by one round. Yeah, certainly wasn't a walkover. Yeah, definitely. Um, well, fantastic. Yeah, deserved rematch. No one's got a problem with that. That's uh, that, that, you must be happy with that. Uh, in terms of you. Uh, the role as the manager, Tony. Um, how, how, how do you deal with that? Because you've, you know, you've been around the block a few times. Um, how did you deal with this uh, this situation we're talking about right now? How did you deal with him in the the, the first couple of days after the fight? How, how, how do you go around that? Oh, well, you mean after the last fight? Yeah, with Andrew. Yeah, after his defeat. What do you do as the manager? Uh, yeah, we just um, talk as a team and uh, address uh, all the issues uh, that happen in the fight and uh, how we can fix it, how we can move forward. Um, it's always just about staying positive because it, for for both uh, fighters, uh, brothers, I just genuinely believe that they're special fighters and 
every fight that you see them in will easily be fight of the night. They give everything they can, everything they've got, they will leave in that ring. And uh, you can't ask for any more than that. Mm. Yes, yeah, certainly, certainly. Um, so, so like Crawford undercard. Uh, we're talking about. Oh, I, I think I think there's a bit of misconception there because I think uh, Terence Crawford might be on the Andrew Maloney undercard. Oh, really? Ooh. So there we go. So uh, we're having a go there, Tony. Doing your job as the promoter. Yeah, Always. <laughs> um, uh, well, it, you know, it's huge. The big, the big yeah, shows, right. man. The big shows, uh, it's going really well in America. Despite this loss, uh, they got the rematch. And um, obviously, Jason is going in to fight uh, Neywar and Nui. Um, how you feeling about that? That monstrous task. Excuse the pun. How, how, how yeah. you feeling about that as the, uh, as the overseer of operations there? Um, to be honest, I went in... Uh with Jason in 2017, oh, and Andrew, to uh, the Superfly uh, tournament, uh, not tournament, uh, promotion by, uh, what's his name? Uh, Loffler. Yeah, Tom Loffler. I was lost for words there. Um, yeah, we went to that show, and we are watching uh, Anui fight live. We are fighting, uh, watching uh, Quadris, and... Um, what's his name? Uh, yeah, Quadris and Estrada, and that was a great fight. And uh, I looked at uh, both Andrew and Jason and said, mate, you can match them with the, all of these guys. And I think that's just when the penny uh, just dropped on them where they thought, we can, we can do this. Wow. And within um, three years, they've gone on to headline the MGM. Uh, Andrew come up sh short, but with those extenuating circumstances and... Um, yeah, Jason uh, had a last-minute change of uh, opponent. He fought a guy that was tall, long, rangy, that he wasn't training for. He was number five in the world. Um, and a weight division above, he, he came down, but there's such a big uh, size difference, and Jason just walked through him. Since the Rodriguez fight, he's uh, just a completely different fighter. And... Uh, Certainly He's that way. been saying, been saying for long enough that well, I just want you to get me the Anui fight. And then with all the issues with uh, him and Casemiro, it's just fate has come through and that fight's happened. And um, he actually, Jason got interviewed today by a uh, Japanese reporter, uh, Daisuke. And he was telling us about the whole history with uh, the fighting Harada and... Um, Lionel Rose, and it was supposed to be someone else fighting uh, Lionel Rose, sort of like the Casemiro, but that fight didn't eventuate, uh, and then Lionel Rose was the next in line, and uh, that's happened. Cool. Wow. So, yeah, history, history repeating itself there a little bit. Um, I was talking to Jason, obviously, very, very recently. He was saying this couldn't have worked out any better. He uh, he's he's he had the the defeat in his career and then come back. He's had a he's been able to rebuild, and then the perfect sort of fight. Um, obviously, um, his previous opponent was very good, but not like the greatest in the world. Came through it, uh, got used to the situation and the environment in how and where he'll he'll be fighting. Um, had a great performance, uh, yeah, that's right. a very good fighter to go into the biggest fight of his life against one of the best fighters he's probably ever going to fight in his life. So, how do you feel about that? Are you are you on the same sort of wave uh, as uh, yeah. your fighter there? I, I am. I genuinely believe that if you want to be something special, you want to leave a legacy. You want to have these kind of fights. You want to know exactly where you stand. And uh, Jason, time and time again, has said that he wants to make it known that guys from Australia can actually not only compete with these guys, but beat these guys and m make the whole industry better in Australia where a, a person that's contemplating uh, playing AFL football or rugby or 
soccer or something different. We'll go, nah, I want to become a boxer just like uh, Jason Maloney. Wow. Very interesting. That kind of brings me on to a point I was going to bring up later in the interview, but I was talking to um, one of your fighters, uh, Jackson England, about this, who I love, by the way. I think he's going to be a real, I think he's going to be a real star. Um, Australian boxing. Um, where, where does it stand? I've been talking to a few people. Some people are like, oh, it's going really well. Things are great. I've spoken to you. It does seem a little, a little bit behind, considering the amount of fighters and the, the, the great history, rich history of Australian fighters. And, and people do like it. I, I've lived in Australia, and every time there was a big fight, the, the pubs would be packed. Where, where There does seem to be some gaps somewhere. I don't know exactly where. But what are the... What, let's start with the problem. No, let's start with the the pros of Australian boxing at the moment? What, what are the good things about it? Uh, well, there's a lot of good uh, young talent coming through. Yeah, um, always, it seems. Yeah, that's right. TV has uh, come in a little bit more uh, than recent times, but uh, that's the positive and the negative because, um, you know, in America, you've got the zone, you've got uh, show... Showtime, you've got Fox, you've got ESPN. In Australia, we've just got Fox Sports. So you've only got either that option there or there's no other funding coming through from different uh, television. You've got uh, your live streaming, but it's, it's, not the, it's just not the budget to put on those uh, bigger fights. Yeah. What we do, uh, we, we find ways to make things happen. But that's the pros and that's the, the cons at the moment. It's all come to the budgets. And um, you, we do everything we can, but um, everything seems to be on the rise. And uh, looking forward to a lot of good young ta uh, talented fighters coming through. Yeah. So tell me about... Uh, the, so with the amateur system in, in, in Australian boxing... Um, how where are they with that the funding the funding for the 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 the, the amateur people um because a lot of your fighters haven't done a lot i know the maloney's have but um a lot of guys they, they've done big things and they haven't really done much amateur fighting but uh, they're quite good what is there um where are we with that with the amateur with the grassroots in australia well, the, the uh, the grassroots is, is going strong. There's a good a amateur scene, but um, there's a lot of guys that um, have opted to get out of the amateurs a bit earlier and just concentrate on the pros because uh, that is one of the issues before in Australian history. We've got some great fighters, but they just stay in the amateurs too long and you just can't make it once you're at a certain age or because so, so many reasons, uh, financial as well. Uh, you, You've been in the amateur for so long. It's not like the, um, a lot of the UK guys and especially the um, Soviet guys, the Cubans, where there's so much funding for the amateurs and you can do that for a sustained amount of time where mm. Australian, you're getting uh, minimal payments, if mm. any. And uh, then, yeah, everyone's got to, got to eat, basically. Yeah. Of course, of course. So, 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 work to be done on the uh, on the sort of uh, the, the the amateur system that's helped create talent is kind of where we're sort of getting there. Is the vibe I'm getting from you anyway? Um, in terms yeah, of right. uh, in terms of you as a promoter promoting uh, getting guys out from Australia, um, we've got the Maloney's doing fantastic things at the moment. I, I feel we're just starting the beginning of the the real you know, the best part of their journey at the moment. I really am. Um, yeah, that's right. who, who should we keep our eye out on um, in, uh, in Australian boxing? Who's, who's going to be doing some big things in the next couple of years? The guys that you mentioned before, um, like we're talking about Jackson England, he's only 22 years old. So there's a big future ahead for him. He's in the state where I live, uh, Western Australia. We've got um, not just... Australia. We've also got um, 
the New Zealand fighters. We've got Mossy Amatangi. He's, I think, 25 years old. Uh, he's a great talent. He fought um, on the Joseph Parker AJ a event in uh, Wales. And I forgot his name. He knocked out the undefeated um, Wilshire prospect over there. And he's also um, knocked out quite a few, few fighters. He uh, fought uh, Kerry Foley for the WBA Oceania title and the WBC's uh, regional belt, the OPBF title. He won that as well. So there's uh, big things coming for him. What weight is um, he, Tony? What weight? That's cruiser, yeah? Or heavy? No, no, super middle. Oh, super middle, excuse me. So so he's 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 looking to do some world level things in the next few years, yeah? He's he's looking to mix it with those Callum Smiths and not right now, obviously, but down the yeah, line. That's right. that, that, that's, yeah, that's, that's the plan. Ooh, okay. He'll come over and train at the same stable as um Jason and Andrew because uh, we've also got other fighters there, uh, undefeated uh, light heavyweight, Liam Callanan, who's 10-0. Ten, uh, we've got uh, Josh Fredrickson, who goes between super middleweight and middleweight. And uh, he's just on, over the weekend won the Queensland State uh, title. So there's a lot of guys at that weight uh, that he'll be able to spar. We've also got uh, uh, Reagan Desai, He's uh, actually taking a break for boxing uh, just uh, for the uh, immediate future. So he, he'll probably be taking a year off or so. Um, but he's only in his early 20s, 22. So um, he'll just come back bigger and stronger. Um, we've also got a young welterweight, he's only 2-0, uh, Mitchell, Mitchell Stapleton, he's the dynamite kid, so he's one to watch out for. Okay. I think he's cool. 21 years old. Okay. Um, I'm just trying to think of other, other <laughs> loads guys. going on, Tony. Uh, Campos, let's talk about him, Andres, and let's talk about what you're doing in Chile, man. Very exciting. Obviously, you uh, first of all, Chile struggling a bit with coronavirus at the moment. Yeah, that's right. Um, sure. As I mentioned before struggling there but we're, looking, we're building the rebuilding the gym over there so that's uh the dragonfly boxing gym in chile yeah so that's um, your gym you you're opening up your own hq in chile very exciting stuff tony well yeah that's with the, the guy that you've interviewed before the maverick of uh, south america uh, yeah. nico martinez yeah he's a great that's... guy yeah tell me a bit about nico uh, yeah, he's a former Air Force uh, pilot in Chile. Um, he's all just a regular pilot as well, but now he's uh, taken a bit of time off that and just focusing heavily on the boxing. He's our uh, man on the ground. He makes things happen. And uh, as I mentioned before, we've got uh, Andreas, who's now number 10 in the WBO. Campbell. Uh, yeah. Looking forward to him uh, fighting for a world title in the coming years. Um, we've got Junior Cruzart, who's uh, seven and 0, 19 years old, had 80 amateurs. He was 78 and two, and those uh, highly controversial two losses. So there's a big, uh, big future for him. We've also got Ramon uh, Muscarena. He's uh, 11 and one. He's um, junior welterweight. He's one to watch out for. Uh, we've also got four and 0. Uh, Rainel Maderos, he's um, originally from Cuba. He's had 145 amateur fights. And uh, he's one to look out for in the lightweight division. So, so you got a he's real... Actually good... Yeah, sorry, mate. Go on. I was just going to say, he's, he's good friends with the guy that just won the WBA super middleweight interim title, Dave Morell, who won the title in his third fight. Yeah, but okay, cool. But they've had... Um, a lot of experience together so that shows you the the talent of uh Maderos as, as well cool cool amazing stuff tony um that must be really exciting new uh pastures new chile um 
South America, loads of South American countries love boxing. Uh, Argentina, uh, obviously Mexico, Central America, obviously, but even, even uh, uh, you know, Colombia. Um, but Chile has never really had a world champion before. Um, but the, the, there seems to be big crowds there uh, going on with Campos and that, um, selling good tickets. Um, it seems yeah, like a real sleeping right. giant down there. Yeah, that's right. Uh, it's one to watch out for. It's an area that traditionally hasn't had as, as strong boxes, but we're looking to um, lay the foundation to have uh, good talent come through that are just not going to go internationally and uh, make up the numbers. They're going to compete and they're going to win these uh, world titles and make a name for themselves. Yeah, fantastic. Fantastic. Um, well, I think we'll, uh, we'll leave it just right there.